also want you to meet my fine family, of which I'm very proud. Uh, this is my wife, Mary. Hello, folks. We're happy that you could be with us today. We're sorry that we couldn't get to see each and every one of you, but welcome into our home. And this is our son, John. Hello, folks. And this is his wife, Eddie. Hello, Eddie. And this is our little daughter, Catherine Scott. Hi, kids. And this is our pet colonel. It's great to have you all visit with us. And I want you to feel free to come by the here any time. We'd be glad to have you. Folks, I want you to meet the members of my law firm. And first, I wish to introduce to you my law partner, Congressman Richard Poff, of whom I'm very, very proud. Well, thank you so much, Ted. I suppose I know Ted Dalton better than any other person in the world outside of the members of his immediate family. I first came to know Ted 10 years ago this fall, when as a frightened young law graduate, I first knocked on his door in quest of a job. Since that time, Ted has been kind enough to endorse me in my three campaigns for Congress. And over the years, we have come to be more than law partners, uh, yes, even more than friends. We have practically been brothers, sleeping often under the same roof, eating together, traveling together, speaking together, hunting together. And you don't live so closely with a man for 10 years without coming to know something about the caliber of his character and the depth of his soul. Never once in all of those 10 years have I known Ted Dalton to do a shoddy trick or to carry a malicious rumor to persecute a political or legal foe or to take advantage of a friend. Sensitive himself and easily wounded, Ted would never consciously do or say anything which would hurt another person's feelings. And by dint of hard work and honest conduct, Ted rose from a rather humble beginning to become a success as a lawyer, a farmer, a businessman, a civic leader, a prominent church layman, and a public servant. You know, too often, success goes to a person's head. Success sometimes breeds fear. Not so with Ted Dalton. As far as he had one quality, which stands out above all the rest. It is his deep humility of spirit and his abiding love for people, all people. If every voter in the state of Virginia were as close to Ted and knew him as well as I did, there would be no question who the next governor of our commonwealth would be. Richard, I appreciate your friendship. You know, I was just thinking that when you left the office six years ago to go to Congress, with your traveling bag in your hand. And as I told you goodbye, I said, Richard, work hard and never let the people down. And you've done that, and I want to commend you for it. And I want to also say to the people of Virginia that when I'm elected governor, I shall work hard and I will never let the people down. And I know you won't, Ted. Now, folks, I want you to meet the next member of our law firm, uh, Jim Turk. He's been with us for five years, and he's been of great aid and help to Congressman Koff and our firm over the years, and we're happy to have him here for you to see. Thank you, Ted. It's really been an inspiration for me to work with you and Richard over the past five years. I can truthfully say that I know the people of Virginia have no better friend than Ted Dalton. And I'm going to do everything that I possibly can between now and November the 5th to see that you are elected governor of Virginia. Thank you, Jim. And now, folks, I uh, want to introduce the latest addition to our firm who just graduated from college, my son, John Dalton. And, John, it's great to have you in here with us. Well, thank you. I certainly have enjoyed my short four or five months that I have been here. Friends, I just finished law school in June. And as my part of the campaign, I have tried to visit the colleges and the universities throughout Virginia. And everywhere I go, speaking with the young people in the colleges, I find that they're particularly interested in keeping our public schools open. That's the main thing that they're thinking about these days. Well, John, we're going to fight to keep them open, aren't we, boys? 
Folks, I want you to meet Mrs. Ruth Card, a Virginia school teacher. Ruth, it's nice to have you to come over. Well, see it's you. nice to be here. Thank you. I want to thank you, Ted, for advocating a $300 raise in teacher salaries next year. Also, $300 next year. We feel that uh, you have always been uh, a friend of the teacher. And uh, the way that in the past 14 years since you've been in the Senate, you have consistently supported legislation that would benefit the teacher and education general. Well, I was happy to do that. We feel all over the state of Virginia that you have been a real friend to education and to teach. So thank you, and I'm going to keep it up. Good. So long. Friends, now I want you to meet one of my neighboring farmers, Mr. Root from over in Fulaski County. Well, Senator Dalton, you are a farmer of our county, and you know the farm problem. And I know how you treat your men on your farms. It will be swell if you elected our governor. Well, thank you, Mr. Root. Now I want you to meet one of the best neighbors in the world, Charlotte Geeson. Thank you, Ted. This is uh, rather unusual for us to be sitting here like this. Most of our conversations prior to now have been of the, well, so-called across-the-back-fence variety. Because, friends, we actually are across the back then, neighbors. For some 20 odd years, it has been just a step across the alley from Ted's house to ours. Our two sons are about the same age, and during their young school life, they felt that each other's house was about the same as their own. So I know Ted as a good neighbor. I also know that he is a lover of dogs and children, a considerate employer and a loyal and generous churchman. But I also know that he is a statesman of the first order, an alert, aggressive leader. And I know that for many years he has campaigned and fought for those things which would be for the good of all the people of Virginia. He has been a leader in reform, in education, health, and the general welfare of the people. And when he is elected governor, we feel that he will bring women into a more prominent place in the government of Virginia. And of course, we women feel that that will be for the good of the state. We believe that the time has come for a change in the political picture in Virginia. We believe that the year is now when we need new, refreshing leadership, when more attention will be paid to the needs and desires of all the people, rather than whose time it is to sit in the governor's mansion. And certainly it would be no calamity in Virginia to have a Republican as governor if that man is of the caliber of Ted Dawson. Ted, I consider it an honor to support you for governor of Virginia. And I do not think it is a dream to say that you will be our next. Thank you, Charlotte. Friends, I want you to meet Mr. Doherty, a businessman of Montgomery County. And Frank, it's good of you to come over today. Well, it's good to be here, Ted. You know that the businessmen in Virginia also think that it's time for a change. We feel that Virginia needs more industry and more jobs. Your program of a well-organized statewide effort to attract new industry certainly sounds good to me. Well, how do you feel about my school program as it affects new industries coming to Virginia? Well, I feel that the uh, threat of closing the schools is probably the greatest danger that exists in Virginia today. The new industry would certainly be attracted to the, to the state if they feel that they're there's no fear of strife or turmoil. And your school program, I think, is the only way that we can avoid such strife. Well, thank you, Frank. Friends, although I'm a Baptist, yet my nearest neighbor, minister friend, is Wilfred Roach, rector of Grace Episcopal Church of Radford, and I'm delighted to have him to come by to see us today. Ted, thank you for asking me to come by. 
and I want to congratulate you and thank you in your efforts to give our state a two-party system, and particularly in this time when we are facing great disagreements among people about how to handle a problem. For a person who is trying to think clearly and keep a situation relaxed and calm. And by the way, Ted, it seems like to me that instead of talking about closing schools with the Russians sending satellites around our planet, we should be talking about bigger and better schools. You're certainly right, Wilfred, and I'm doing my best to keep the public separate schools of Virginia, and I know that you share with me the same concern that I have over the education of the school children of Virginia. Fellow Virginians, it's great for your friends and your neighbors to come by with you in the hard fight of this campaign. And I want to appeal to the people of Virginia everywhere, the ministers, the school teachers, the fathers and mothers, the PTA, the businessmen, the laborers, the farmers, and citizens all to help us in the greatest fight of your life, to help preserve the separate public schools of Virginia. To me, the issue becomes clearer day by day. On the one hand, the Democratic leadership is offering a program of cutting the funds and closing the schools of Virginia. It can end only in the closing down of the schoolhouses of this state or in wholesale mixing of the races in our schools. And neither of these things are acceptable to our people. On the other hand, we're telling the people in a calm, clear voice that there is a way to preserve our separate public schools of Virginia, and that is by pupil assignment plan administered by the local school board, who know the problem best and who can handle it to preserve the separate public schools of this state. I say to you that it's the greatest challenge of your lifetime. And I want you to have a part in doing your help and doing your best for the 800,000 school children of today and those that will follow them tomorrow. My friend, you can close factories and business houses. This will hurt. But whenever you close down the little red school houses of Virginia, it will be the beginning of the decay of our civilization. And so I call upon you in the final days of this campaign to put your heart, whole heart into it as I am doing, and it will give you the reward of the greatest satisfaction of having done your part in the biggest challenge that Virginia's faced in a hundred years. Thanks for being with us, folks. And let me thank you, too. Mary and I have worked hard in seeking to bring in this campaign to Virginia a real two-party system, and we worked hard in trying to carry the government of Virginia back to the people. And above that, we worked hard in trying to preserve the separate public schools of Virginia. And folks, we believe we are right. And we have the conviction in our hearts that right in the end will prevail.